Did Blade the Vampire Hunter really truly betray the other heroes of the Marvel Universe, or is there something much deeper and more sinister going on? Well, let's hop into the pages of Blood Hunt issue number four and find out together, shall we? So then, picking up directly from where the last issue left off, Vampire Lord Blade had shocked the Avengers by bringing the Temple of First Blasphemy from the depths of Atlantis right here, right now, to New York City. The situation has grown so dire that Doctor Strange and Clea have no choice but to try and go to Lodveria and break bread with Doctor Doctor Doom, after all, he is a powerful magic user in his own right, and up until now, has actually managed to keep his home safe from vampire attacks. Why? Because Victor actually knows a lot more about what's going on here than everyone else. He knows the true name of the mastermind behind these wicked events, and that name is Varney, the original vampire of the Marvel Universe. You see, it's actually Varney who has been puppeteering Blade's actions this whole time. Now, if that answer seems like something of an ass pull, don't worry because Jed McKay actually buckled down and did the work in this situation. You see, the events of Blood Hunt were actually set in motion long ago in the pages of a 94 Blade story wherein Varney's follower, Marie Laveau, actually prepped Blade to be a new vessel for the original Bloodsucker. It didn't work back then, but it seems like the second time was really the charm. Doctor Doom is confident he can help Doctor Strange and Clea bring back the sun because Victor Von Doom is nothing if not very, very full of himself. To pull off this miracle feat, though, he tells Steven that he's going to need two things. One, a circle of incredibly powerful magicians. Thankfully, the kids from Strange Academy will be able to do just that. Read their tie-in if you want to know more. But perhaps most shockingly, Doctor Doom says he is going to need the Eye of Agamotto. Yes, that's right. If Doctor Doom is going to help, he needs to become Sorcerer Supreme. Which I'm sure is one of those things that won't end up biting anyone in the ass ever. Now, while all that is going on, we see what became of Tiger and Hunter's Moon. They've come all the way to Asgard looking for a special something that they hope will allow them to push back the vampire horde, only as we discover this something actually turns out to be a someone. Well, actually, some god, none other than Khonshu, god of the moon, who has been imprisoned in Asgard since he last attempted to conquer Earth back during the Jason Aaron Avengers run. Now, Hunter's Moon and Tigra don't have time to ask the other Asgardians if they can have the key to let this vengeful god got out, so instead they've done the next best thing. You see, they actually recruited longtime Thor villain Wrecker of the Wrecking Crew in hopes that he can use his magic Asgardian crowbar to just jimmy the prison door open. And honestly, this might be like the coolest thing Wrecker has ever done. Now back on Earth, Varney makes ready for his grand ascension ritual. As he explains, he is as old as Atlantis, part of the original cult that first transcribed the Darkhold. It was in those ancient days he first became a vampire hell. In fact, Varney is so old, both in terms of continuity and in the story itself, he actually fought Conan the Barbarian and Red Sonia back when Marvel had the rights to those characters originally. Though, as we learn from the vampire's mouth, he never actually intended to stay in this form. Being a vampire was just a stepping stone to be something greater, more powerful, darker. And now that the vampires have some god blood from Thor and the living dark hold in the form of Scarlet Witch, Varney is finally ready to evolve into a being of pure, unliving Dark Force energy. A being powerful enough not only to keep the lights of Earth snuffed out forever, but also to extend his darkness to other galaxies and snuff out their light. However, in an act of pure irony, no sooner does the ancient vampire king finish this big speech does the moon once again begin to rise above them all, a fact of which could only be made possible by the return of Khonshu to the mortal plane. And oh, Khonshu did not come alone, he brought with him the united spirits of every Moon Knight who has ever come before. A veritable army of bloodless ancient Egyptian warriors ready to do battle against the unholy vampire. Legions, and at the front of this great army, you guessed it, is none other than the original Moon Knight, Mark Spector, back again from the dead, and I mean really. Is anyone surprised by this? Jed McKay wrote probably the most well-received, critically acclaimed longest-running Moon Knight series in the modern era. So, of course, the big action climax of his first big summer event is the return of Moon Knight, who is being heralded with all the pomp and circumstance of a true AAA megastar. Ah, you truly love to see it, and the hits just keep on coming, too, as it seems that Black Panther wasn't nearly as vampire brainwashed as he was letting on. The heart-shaped herb has actually been fighting off Varney's corruption, and he's only been waiting for the perfect chance to strike, which is now, of course, 
course, Varney saw this betrayal coming and was sure to watch his back, only in reality, T'Challa wasn't trying to use his blade to kill the Vampire King. Oh no, no, he was using it to try and free Thor, who, after being bled, sucker punched, and used in this hunt a holy ritual, is more than ready to kick some sucker head ass as the comic comes to a close. And so that was Blood Hunt issue number four, everybody, and once again, while this big crossover event series isn't exactly deep, nuanced, or complex, it certainly does deliver on the big, bombastic summer action movie set pieces. Again, I think Moon Knight returning in this story is probably one of the best, most triumphant returns for a hero in a long time. Clearly, given McKay's own long history with the character, he thought about this moment a lot, and I will say that he ended up pulling it off to an absolute perfect T. Also, having Blade actually be possessed and controlled by an ancient evil vampire also thankfully lets him off the hook for any wrongdoing and means by the time this story is done. We won't need to spend several more series having him do a big redemption tour or anything. We can just get back to business as usual. Overall, I think I'd feel comfortable giving this one an 8 out of 10. I think it's one of the strongest issues in this event so far. Blood Hunt may be the comic book equivalent of candy, but hey, who doesn't love some good candy sometimes? Hey there everyone, it's your old pal Cape Jewel again, thanking you so much for watching to the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed it, and if you did, why not check out my Amazon link down in the description. Yes, that's right, the Cape Jewel channel officially has its own Amazon storefront now. You can pick up a comic or anything else for that matter, and if you did, you'd really be helping me in the channel. So with that out of the way everyone, I will see you again next time. Bye bye